Hello, everyone. Welcome to Madrid. Rich Hagen at the news desk. It is a great privilege and honor to welcome to the studio Nate Holt and Sean Kornhauser, the creative geniuses, <laughs> don't use the word lightly, behind the project Enter the Battlefield. A lot of you will know them from Walking the Plains. Um, Nate, Enter the Battlefield, an extraordinary project. Just for those people who've been hiding under a rock mm -hmm. or a manor rock, <laughs> tell us what is Enter the Battlefield? Right, so uh, Sean and I have for about two and a half years uh, been working on a documentary about players at the Pro Tour. Um, and it basically just goes a little deeper than coverage often goes uh, to explore the players' lives and their relationship to the Pro Tour. And We're it's coming out uh, this Monday and Tuesday. Wow, so, so we, are, yeah. we are only a couple of days away from mm -hmm. the run of this. We'll tell you how you can see it in just a little bit. But if it's just about to be released, well, we should see the trailer, right? Sure. Why don't we do that right now? <laughs> Magic is kind of the only thing in my life that I ever wanted to be good at, that I ever dedicated my time to, and I just haven't really stopped. The one thing I guess I would say to people is, my son never loses. He's relentless. He's relentless. I would want to like have a legacy. I was the first female to top eight a Pro Tour. It was like a huge moment in Magic history, and I want to be remembered as that person, and I want like other females to be inspired to play or do as well as, as I did. Yeah, and I still love playing Magic, and for me, it's like the Hall of Fame is so close. I feel like, you know, one more good Pro Tour finish even could get me back on the ballot, maybe get me the Hall of Fame. Sean, let's be honest, even putting together a trailer like that mm -hmm. is a huge undertaking, right? Yeah, I mean, we go through, you know, several versions of a trailer. We have meetings discussing the different arrangements, which characters should go in, the order. Uh, I don't, I think that was probably the fifth or sixth version of that trailer. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, compared to the movie, it's obviously, you know, dropping the bucket. Right, but, okay. Yeah. Now, I think most people sort of regard the two of you as this double act, where Nate mm -hmm. is the front man and the comedy and the creativity, and Sean, you're documenting all the zaniness. Is that a f kind of fair perception that people uh, have? Um, I, I can understand why people think that. Uh, I, I think people don't really know how much creative work Sean does behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, I am typically the front man, you know, with walking the planes and whatnot, yep. so the audience is more familiar with my zany weirdness. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But uh, for this project, I'm not on camera. I'm not the front man. This project is just about the players. Right. Um, and it's in their words and in the words of their families uh, and friends and loved ones and colleagues. Uh, so it's, it's a very different vibe than Walking the Plains. Right. Uh, yeah. so, so where did the whole project come from? Because Magic the Pro Tour has been around for, for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And there have been great stories and great players. And you've come along and gone, this is what needs documenting. So where did, where did, in a sense, that epiphany come from, where you went, this is the story that we want to tell? Well, um, it's funny. Uh, Sean can speak more to this because he's made lots of documentaries. And, uh, you know, th this was, uh, I'm newer to documentary filmmaking. Uh, but part of finding the story in a documentary happens at the end. So, you know, a normal scripted project, you have the story, you write it out, you plan the shoot, and you execute. And this is like we have some idea of what we're going for. It's a vague kind of story in the beginning. And we just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. And then we look at all the footage that we have at the end and say what story is there in this like unsculpted clay so to speak that we can tell so, so sean do, do you have 25 stories sitting on hard drives at home if you like and and these are the, the best of the bunch how, how does that work yeah in a sense i mean there's a period of time i don't know maybe a few months into editing where the deadline at that point is okay sean give us a rough edit 
And so I have a rough edit that's just kind of a loose idea. This is what the story could be. Mm -hmm. uh, so we all get together, me and Nate and Greg Collins, the executive producer, and we say, oh, this, this, you know, we like this part. This one kind of works, but putting this person here just doesn't work. And then I go back and spend another few months in crafting and at a certain point, it just kind of gels and comes together, and we have a better idea of what the actual story okay. is. Mm. Nate, on some level, it's a sports movie because right. it's, magic is a competitive game, which means that we have no control over who wins. That's so, right, yeah. So were you following people and watching Pro Tours over the last couple of years really invested right. in the amount of footage you had of people? And like, I really hope he top eights. Or, absolutely, know. absolutely. Um, you know, we've tried this with Walking the Plains before where we want to follow somebody who we think is going to have a great tournament, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, uh, you know, not a whole lot you can do other than look at the math of their prior results. But sometimes you just get a feeling like, I think this person's locked in, but it's very soft science to say the For least. Sure. Um, so I think with this, you know, we were following people, hoping that they would at least have interesting results, be they successful, unsuccessful, or somewhere in the middle, but something that changed the way they feel or think about the game. And of course, we also just want to talk to people who did really well, so part of it is, who won the tournaments? Now let's go find them. Right. Let's go to their homes and, and uh, talk to them. Well, yeah. one good place to start is with a group of players called the Peach Garden Oath. This mm -hmm. is Reed Duke, William Huey Jensen, and Owen Turtenwald. We've got a little sneak peek from the movie about PGO. Take a look. While competitive magic is a one-on-one -on -one game, like tennis or chess, it's commonplace for players to collaborate on strategy and deck building in order to improve as individuals. Regular collaborators call themselves teams. For top-ranked players Reed Duke, Owen Turdenwald, and William Jensen, also known as Huey, the concept of the team goes beyond a professional commitment. The original Peach Garden Oath um, were the three ancient Chinese heroes that banded together oath of uh, fidelity and brotherhood in order to defend the empire against, uh, you know, corruption and evil and all that bad stuff. And we became the Peach Garden Oath because we feel that very well parallels our, our situation. <laughs> Corruption and evil and all that bad stuff. That's yeah, yeah. just fantastic. Now, now, Sean, as a filmmaker, there you are sitting with dozens and dozens of hours of footage. Do you hear that line and go, that's it right there? Do you know instantly what you've just heard? Yeah, there's definitely lines that you mark in your head. You're like, that needs to go in. And honestly, you do it a lot while shooting, but then when you go into the editing room and I go through these, I don't know, terabytes of interviews and I, I logged every, I transcribed every interview. So you go through and every time you hear a line like that, you put a little asterisk or, you know, you mark a note like, let's figure out a way to include this line. And yes, that line was one of those. <laughs> right, for sure. Um, Nate, we've seen the Peach Garden Oath there, but it's not just about the three of them, is it? No, there's uh, seven principal characters mm -hmm. uh, in the film. And of course, they're friends and family colleagues. Um, so they are three of the seven. Mm -hmm. uh, but we wanted to kind of cast a wider net to give like a, a, a broader feel of different kinds of relationships that players have to the Pro Tour. One of the things that we always have to balance here at the live shows mm -hmm. is that generally, when you ask someone, how are you? They say four and two or <laughs> yeah. five and one. Right. They don't say life's really good. The family are great. You right. know, the pressure is all about the here and now and the next round and the next card and was your sideboard correct and so on. Mm -hmm. But you've taken a very different approach that is a much longer approach it really is about not just magic 
as life, but magic within a wider life. Right. Uh, and that's that's something really great. Yeah, and they, you know these players, they like you said, they they put so much effort into these pro tour performances and and just grit and guts and determination. And uh, I think with walking the planes, we were telling a lighthearted side of that story, and this is more just. Let's get serious and let's talk about like the earnest uh, desires and dreams of these players. Take me yeah. to film school for a minute, Sean. Mm -hmm. What is the difference be as a filmmaker between doing a 10 minute walking the planes over the course of a, a Grand Prix weekend and then a week of editing versus not just this longer form piece, but with the tone being very different, that the wizard's cloak is not in <laughs> th this piece, right? So. <laughs> That's correct. The wizard does not make an appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's worlds apart. Uh, it's kind of hard to even describe, but yeah, like you said, we make walking the planes. We shoot for a few days, maybe a week. We are running around the tournament hall, kind of trying to come up with ideas on the fly. What's happening in the tournament right now? What's a quick little segment we can shoot? And then I have a week to edit. It goes on YouTube and we move on. Uh, with Enter the Battlefield, we shot for almost two years. We mm -hmm. were spending weeks and weeks thinking about characters, about ideas, and yeah, like you said, they weren't, there's some humor in the movie, but it's not that lighthearted. There's a lot of emotional stories going on. Did that surprise you? Because I, I know that Nate sort of brought you into the game and, and part of the fun for me has been watching you absorb yourself sure. into this amazing community. And one of the things I, I, I love, and I said this to you when we got the preview at PAX last year, it feels true. Enter the battlefield feels like you've genuinely reflected what the magic community is all about, which is an incredible achievement because mm -hmm. we're a complex bunch of guys and gals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's great to hear. And yeah, you're right. It, it took a while for me to get my footing in the magic world. Mm -hmm. Nate kind of introduced me to it, and uh, but it's been a few years now, and I knew these stories were there. We just weren't able to quite dig deep enough, and that's what is the best part about this movie is we were kind of able to dig beneath the surface in a way we weren't able to before. Well, we talked about Peach Garden Oath. Uh, one of the other characters in the movie is Chris Pecula. So why don't we hear a little bit of the Chris Pecula story from Enter the Battlefield. I started playing when I was 19, summer after my freshman year of college. One friend of mine got introduced to it somewhere and introduced the rest of us to it. And then when we found out there were actually comic shops or whatever running tournaments, that was just, that was it. The fact that we could then just go to these weird tournaments just was huge to me. Like I just loved the, uh, loved the idea of playing in a tournament and I'm still kind of the same way. I'm sure, like me, you want to see much, much more of Enter the Battlefield. The waiting is almost over. So, mm -hmm. Nate, tell us, when and where do we get to see this movie? Okay, so this Monday, the day after the Pro Tour finishes, mm -hmm. on this very Twitch channel that be everybody's watching right now, uh, Enter the Battlefield will start on a 12-hour loop and just go, after 12 hours, it'll just loop. It starts at 12 p.m. on West Coast U.S. time. Mm -hmm. That's 3 p.m. East Coast U.S. time and 9 p.m. Continental European time. Yep. Um, and so join us. We'll be in the Twitch chat. And then the next day, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, uh, it will be on Netflix and YouTube. Uh, so we very much encourage to, for people to watch it on Netflix if uh, it is in your Netflix market. Um, and if it's not in your Netflix market, it'll be on the Wizards of the Coast YouTube channel for you. All right, so 12-hour stream Twitch on Monday, then Netflix and YouTube on Tuesday. If you have a significant other or friends who don't quite know what it is you do every weekend with Magic the Gathering, I encourage you to hold parties and just bring them in to watch because you will get so much truth and honesty and fantastic insight into the world of this, the greatest game. Gentlemen, Nate Holt, Sean Kornhauser, can't thank you enough for coming in. Thanks for all you do for the community with Walking the Plains. But Enter the Battlefield, life on the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour is coming your way, and it is incredible. Thank you, Rich. Thanks, Rich. <laughs>